How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be creating this really cool abstract, kind of satisfying animation. We're gonna have fun with modeling this, animating this, and making this beautiful procedural material. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with EV and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so we are gonna hop into a blank blender document, um, and we're just gonna go ahead and import a cylinder, just like that. Now, right over here, let's go ahead and give this guy 85 on the vertices. And then on the depth, just make it pretty thin, like the half of an Oreo, something like that. This really is not an exact science. You can do whatever you want here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit R, X, 90, and then Control A and apply rotation. That's super important right there. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, it's right above the tab key. And I'm gonna hit tab, go over here to the move tool. And uh, I'm just gonna move this out to right about here. Again, with, with these kind of motion graphics, uh, it's not an exact science, just kind of do what makes you feel good. So move it out to right about that area. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get a plane axis just like that. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this guy, we're gonna go to the modifiers, add modifier, and we're gonna add a array. And then instead of relative offset, we're gonna go with an object offset and use the empty as the object. And then I'm gonna go back to the tilde key and click on top and then just hit R and rotate it like that. And then if you want, you can definitely hit tab to go to the edit mode and then um, you can go ahead and uh, where are we at? You can use the scale tool and make him thicker if you'd like. Now, one thing I wanna do is kind of model this a little bit. So in edit mode, we're gonna go here to the face select, select, select this face, select this face, and hit I, and then just bring that in like that. And then what we're gonna do is just go ahead and loop cut this just to get it nice and subdivided. Now once you click with the loop cut, you can go down here and give it a couple faces. Um, we're gonna go up here, make it pretty dense, 12, and then here we're gonna click, and then right over here, let's just type 12. And now we have a nicely subdivided guy here and then we can subdivide this if you want as well um, it's okay to get pretty dense we don't need to get you know super exact on like optimizing uh, geometry because this is really the only amount of geometry we're doing we're not making a full crazy scene where we need to get super exact um, I know a lot of people really get into that but we don't need to get into that today I'm gonna add modifier and we're gonna go ahead and add a bevel and then once we do that you're gonna see this amount go ahead and add whatever amount you want and we can even bring up those segments, right click, shade smooth, and you're gonna have a nice guy like this. And then all we have to do now is just bring up the count of that array and um, close off that array. And then you can even kind of close it off a little bit more. Maybe bring it like that, bring up that count some more. And then I'm gonna click on our empty bring it like that. All right, cool. We have successfully created this portion of the tutorial. Now let's go ahead and get in a uh, displacement. So we'll click on the displace. It's going to go crazy. We're going to click on new. Let's go here to the textures tab, go from image or movie to clouds, bring your depth here and you can bring your scale up as well, all the way to two for now. We're going to go back to the wrench. And then what I'm gonna do is bring that strength down significantly just so it's affecting it just enough like that. What I'm gonna do now is go from normal on the direction to the Z axis. And what that's gonna do is just displace it this direction, which gives it a little bit more play and with, you know, without it clipping and going into itself and all that, you just can displace it on one axis. And then we can bring that size 
up a little bit more to kind of play with it. And this portion is certainly up to your preference. Now let's go ahead and animate the displacement. So this is some OG Ducky 3D stuff with <laughs> animating displacement. I haven't done this in a while. Um, so we're gonna get an empty. I'm up here in the outline, I'm gonna double click it and type in DISP. Just name it whatever you want here. We just wanna be able to differentiate it from this empty. And then we're gonna go ahead in the uh, curve settings, I mean the curve menu and go to cycle. I mean, uh, to uh, a circle here. All right, so super cool. What we're gonna do now is click on DISP, go to our constraints and add a follow path and add the Bezier circle. So we want the path to be able to go in a circle like that. That's super important. That'll give us more interesting displacement mo movements. Let's click back on this object, go to our um, wrench, our uh, modifiers here, and then go to object instead of local. Object, pick on DISP, and then click on DISP. And then if you play with your Y axis, you'll notice this animates now. So we have this animation currently. So let's go ahead and just keyframe that. Now go to your edit, your preferences, and in the animation tab, make sure your default interpolation is on linear. Um, I keep it there by default for me because I almost only do linear animations. And then for me, we're gonna go with 500 on this guy here. So on DISP, let's go and hand, animate that. So put your cursor right over here and hit the back button to go to frame zero, which is very important for looping animations. And then I'm gonna click on this keyframe go to the very end and type in 360. And that's gonna give you a perfect loop. If you notice right up here, that's saying 11 frames a second, which means this scene is getting a little heavy. Now I mentioned, we don't have to worry about density here. And that's because we can kind of, so what you can do is bring that bevel, turn the bevel off by clicking that. And now we are back at 25 frames a second. So that bevel is definitely making it heavier. And that's because we already have enough density here. Um, but that bevel just kind of tips it over the edge. So what we do is we can just turn that off for now, but notice right here, that means it's gonna be on for our render. So with that being said, let's go ahead and animate the uh, DISP one more time, and we're gonna animate it here in our constraints. So we'll go to the very end, go back to frame zero, make this offset zero, click here, go to the very end and type in one zero zero. 100, and that's gonna give you a 360 degree motion. So now this di this displacement is gonna go in a circle, giving you a really nice amount of variety and variation in this without it being kind of offset different places. So this really makes it look nice, makes it look cool and clean. And now we can move on to uh, rendering and shading. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the front, click on the Shift A and go to a camera, Control Alt Zero, Snap that to view, then I'm gonna hit G and middle click to move it around. And then I'm just gonna highlight everything here, hit zero, I'm gonna hit R twice and just kind of rotate this to be how you like it. And then I'm gonna bring it out a little bit again and then bring it down. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A. We're gonna go get a plane, hit R, X, 90. We're gonna bring this back over here and then just scale it up till it goes past your camera view here. And then that's gonna be it for that. Right about now is a good time to save. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call it save yeast, save that. All right, now let's go ahead and render this guy. Now this part you can definitely do in Cycles or Eevee. I understand if you have a less powerful laptop, you definitely wanna render an Eevee and you definitely can here. Now we're gonna go into shading. Now one cool thing is if you are gonna use say an image texture or something, this is very easy to unwrap. You just hit U and then Smart UV Project and it will pretty much be done. I've tested it already with a couple of materials and it unwraps really well just with this. So if you wanna use like a stone or a wood, you certainly can. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and design our material. Now before we do that, I do wanna go on like a 10 second tangent. For those of you real-time materials users, the um, cloth materials look awesome on this. So if say you click on the uh, like the basic knitter, you can add that and it already looks awesome. Goes to that edge, looks really nice and clean. Uh, and you can do kind of anything you want with that. So for those of you doing that, the cloth is great for this. Um, but let's go ahead and make that shading. So we're gonna hit zero and then we're gonna go click on a new right here in the shading tab. And we're gonna have some fun here. So let's go ahead and get a color ramp 
and then we'll plug that into the base color. We'll get a gradient node, so Shift A search gradient texture. We're gonna hit that Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. And then we're gonna plug this right here. And then there we have it. So we can just go ahead and rotate it. I'm gonna rotate it to be something like this so we can have some fun with color. So I rotated it on the Y axis. And then let's give it some pretty cool colors. So let's go with a nice blue gradient. We're gonna go with a good teal. And then we're gonna go with more of a deep blue over here, so that's gonna look nice. And then what I wanna do now is Shift A and search RGB, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make this all the way vibrant and make it nice and purple. We're gonna get a mix RGB, so we're gonna mix these two colors together, put that color here, and then we're gonna use a layer weight to mix them together. So we're gonna go here and use the facing, and then now they're gonna be able to mix together really nicely. So this is it pretty much not there and then add some blend and you get a beautiful material. Now we're gonna be rendering this in cycles. So if we wanna check it out in cycles, this is how it's looking. Let's go ahead and further this material. So I'm gonna give it a nice view here, with some nice lights. I do wanna get an HDRI. I do wanna get an HDRI that has a good amount of uh, light so we can kind of see what's going on. And uh, let's go ahead and turn that bevel back on so it looks good here. All right, so let's go ahead and goof with our roughness and our bump. And I'm just gonna hit G and bring this up. I'm gonna hit G and bring these guys down. So let's go ahead and shift A and get a bump node. And then we're gonna get a, vor a uh, color ramp and a Voronoi texture. So plug the vector into the vector. We're gonna plug the distance into the color ramp and plug the color into the height. That's gonna do this madness. We're gonna do the distance of 0.1 and then bring our color ramp in, I guess the white portion, so we just get dots. That's all we want. And then you can bring that scale up and you get more dots. And so that's gonna give you this nice subtle um, effect that you can, like the viewer can notice and be like, oh cool, there's a little texture going on. And the next thing we can do is um, we can add in a little bit of roughness fun. So let's get another color ramp and then get a noise texture. Plug that vector into the vector, plug the color into the color and the color here into roughness. And then what I'm gonna do is the standard crunch in, you can kind of see it working right there. Bring that detail to 12, bring that roughness pretty high. And then I'm bring my scale to say um, two. And that's gonna give you something pretty cool. Notice how reflective it is here. We'll take this black portion, bring it up so that it's not quite so reflective, but it is enough, reflective enough to give you something really interesting looking. So this is what we have here. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and um, light it, though this back wall needs a color. So I'm gonna click on it, click new, and give it a nice light blue color to complement the rest of the scene. So let's go back to layout. Here we have it. I'm gonna click here and just give it back to the uh, regular lights. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to a light and get a spotlight. I'm gonna hit S and kind of scale it down, and then I'm gonna hit G, and then hit R, oh, maybe move it over here more, and then hit R twice to kind of point it back to that, and then I'm gonna give it a power of say 30,000. I don't know why these things need to be so drastically bright, but they do. Um, and then we're gonna bring that radius up to smooth out that, and then what I'm gonna do is just hit Shift D, and then get this guy to be behind, to get to be some sort of like a key light, and then hit R twice and point it here. There we go, we have kind of this really cool looking thing. And now let's go ahead and get an HDRI. I'm gonna get my HDRI from polyhaven.com. You can go ahead and browse HDRIs. And I wanna use an interior. So let's go here to um, indoor. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a random one, which uh, let's go ahead and just go with this one here. It really doesn't matter. The goal is to just get one that doesn't have a lot of crazy color in it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this on my desktop. All right, so now that that HDRI is on my desktop, I'm gonna to go to my render view here. And then we're gonna go click on this world icon, go from color to environment texture, and then open, and let's go ahead and add that right there. And then it's far too bright. We wanna use it as kind of supporting lighting, so we're gonna do 0.3 
on the strength. And now we have, and now we have our animation. We can press play on it. Of course, it's gonna be slow because bevel is on. Let's go ahead and just render it out and see what one frame looks like. All right, so this is what our frame looks like. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of denoising in our compositor. So click on compositing, click use nodes, shift A and get a viewer. Just go here, oops, sizing it. Then I'm gonna hit shift right click to, to join those two. And let's get a denoise. Let's hit shift A search and get a denoise. Plug that there and then um, that's really gonna be it. We're not gonna use the extra stuff because it's already super bright. So what I'm gonna do now is go to my camera icon. Definitely wanna give myself maybe 400 samples on that and that's pretty much it. Now let me show you how to export this and we'll be done. So go to this little printer icon, pick your resolution. I'm gonna stick with 1080p. And then right here, I'm gonna go here, go to desktop, create a new folder and call it, um, just call it spin, just the first word to come to mind and then accept that, and that's gonna throw all your PNG sequences in there, your PNG images. And then hit render, render animation, and it's gonna render through all of your images. Um, there you go, that is the tutorial. I hope you learned some stuff. I love making stuff like this. If you wanna see more tutorials like this, just kind of abstract stuff, I have a whole playlist dedicated to that. And this right here is another one that I really love. So if you wanna check that out, you certainly can. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.